union representing Youngstown State University's faculty puts its support behind a fact finders report. The union voting to accept that report on Friday and it all comes after the union issued a 10 day strike notification amid a contract dispute. Now it falls into the trustees hands. So joining us to go over this situation, YSU OEA spokesperson Mark Vopat. Mark, thank you uh, for joining us again back here on the weekend morning show. Oh, thanks for having me. OK, so let's start off. The fact finders report recommends a 6% pay increase over three years for faculty. So why does the union feel that this is justified when non faculty employees have had to take some salary reductions along with you know, furloughs and layoffs? Uh, I think that um, that the furloughs are an example of the hasty decision making that um, occurred at the beginning of the pandemic and that the fact finders report um, both sides in fact finding were able to present their case, including budget numbers. The the fact finder, Judge Widgen, had all the information, and I just don't think that the predicted um, the predicted shortfalls were there. So the the unions that negotiated um, in the spring were based on predicted cuts to the state share of insurance, uh, state share of instruction of about 20 percent. That turned out to only be about 3.8 percent. There was a predicted decline in enrollment of up to 15 percent. And we know that President Dress Tressel actually just recently mentioned that that reduction in students was only 3.7 percent. So we're, we don't buy the um, claim that the university is actually um, in financial distress. And in fact, President Trussell in a recent interview said that he believes that the furloughs, that the cuts that that certain that the um, staff took should be restored. Okay, so, so um, tell me a little bit about the financial situation is different. I yeah, think. and I know you wanted to delay these talks and the university you said said no, uh, they wanted to go forward with them. You were hoping for a post pandemic outlook on how things looked when we get out of all of this. But uh, needless to say, you're moving on. So what kind of sacrifices has the faculty had to make in order to return to the classrooms during the pandemic? Are those sacrifices going unnoticed? How do they feel about just working amid the coronavirus pandemic? Um, at right now, I mean, in, in terms of sacrifice there, I would say that what most professors would prefer is to be back in the classroom. And what this is really required of, of all of us is to, I mean, retool courses that we've taught for years. So, you know, uh, courses that I've taught for five or six years, 10 years, and sometimes um, I've now had to move those entirely online. Um, though that movement of online creating creating interactive videos, new ways of teaching, um, using Zoom. Uh, this has been a, a whole new learning experience where I've done online courses before, but actually doing a com combination of hybrid courses. Number of faculty, this is all new, and this was all done you know, over summer, um, generally without any compensation. And the faculty, I think, have, have stepped up and really really um, worked hard to make sure that the student experience is as good as possible and, and much, much better than spring, where it was sort of an emergency situation. Um, trustees, so this is, you're seeing this across the board. Sure thing. So the trustees will take up a vote on this tomorrow. Do you expect That's them correct. to accept this report? I can't speak for the trustees. Um, historically, that's not been, that's not been the case. So in, in over, I believe, 20 years, the board of trustees, I don't know if they, in the last 20 years, I don't believe they've ever accepted a fact finders report. On the other hand, I also know that this is a unique situation that we're we're negotiating during a pandemic. I think that there's um, this is something new. I also think that you know the fact finders report is fair and reasonable. I mean, obviously, we didn't get everything we would have liked. The administration didn't get everything they would have liked. But I think overall, it's a fair and reasonable. It pretty much keeps in place what we have right now, and it allows us to move forward so that we can sort of focus on the university and on our students. So I, I want to know what you think happens if they reject it because you have issued this 10 day strike notice. Uh, you believe you know that you're in a position now where you've given a little and, and maybe uh, they can give a little on one side. Are you at a point where there is no more wiggle room after this vote tomorrow? I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think we're I think what the the strike notification is that we are hoping for the best preparing for the worst and we are always open to further negotiations. And so the fact that we have the option of striking doesn't mean that we actually have to take that option. Yeah, you know, that we have to 
to actually strike. And we're, you know, we're hoping that the university minimally, I mean, obviously the, the best case scenarios would, would be both parties accepting the report and we can move on from this. But in the absence of that, um, of course, we would hope to be able to sit down at the table and, and you know, come to an agreement without having to sort of go to that extreme of, of having a strike. Would a strike, though, I guess, throw things off a little bit for students and the, the faculty? You know, they're already dealing with the pandemic. It's a lot to take on uh, this year, especially. So what do you think the impact could be if you have to move forward with that? Uh, it's it's difficult to say. Um, again, looking historically, most strikes that have occurred at YSU have been fairly short and the both parties have been able to come to an agreement. Um, I think the last strike that we had lasted two days. In one of those days, there were no classes um, in session, so the strike started over a over a holiday. So, I'm I'm optimistic that we will come to an agreement that this won't be particularly disruptive. Historically, uh, they haven't been. So, for most students, it might at best be a day or two without classes. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping we never reach that point and that the I mean, obviously, my fingers are crossed that the Board of Trustees are simply going to say, let's let's get this done. This was an independent fact finder. It's, it's fair. Let's just let's put this to bed so that we can get back to work. All right. Well, I really appreciate you weighing in on this. I know we're following the story closely here at 21 News and we will be talking, of course, to both sides tomorrow as they head into that meeting and afterwards. So thank you so much for joining us here on the weekend morning show. No, thanks for having me.